What's up YouTube, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at another lead code SQL problem. This one's part of SQL 50, lead code security list of SQL problems. And this one's marks is medium. So we're getting into medium territory. So let's solve this one together. Let's get started. So as I said, this was marked as medium. It's called monthly transactions one. It's numbered 1193. And it's part of the basic aggregate function section. But again, it's marked as medium. So this should, should be a bit harder than the others. Yeah, let's check out what we have here. We have one table called transactions. It has a column called ID, one called country, one called state. Then we have an amount and trans date for transaction date. ID is the primary key of this table. So that means we don't have any duplicates in here because there should be one value per ID. Our task is to write an SQL query to find for each month and country the number of transactions and the total amount, the number of approved transactions and their total amount. We should return the result table in any order and the query result format is in the following example. We have as input only the transactions table which might have an ID for the transaction, country, US, 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 DE. We have a state of the transaction either approved or declined. We have an amount for the transaction and a transaction date. For the output, we would have the month, the country, and then for those two, we sum up or we aggregate somehow the transaction count, the approved transaction count, the transaction total amount, total amount of all transactions, and then the total amount of all approved transactions, which should be less than or equal than the total transaction amount because this is only approved transactions. Yeah, so taking another look at the problem statement, we see that we should find for each month and country. So we'll have to group by a month and country, the number of transactions and their total amount, the number of approved transactions and their total amount. So we're doing two aggregations for all transactions and then two for all approved transactions. So yeah no ordering required, no rounding or anything because yeah, we don't really make divisions or averages here. So yeah, quite simple in terms of what we want, but let's see how we get to it. So let's start with our select statement. As I said, we're doing this for each month and country. So let's select month and country. Also looking at the output and then we'll have to group by that later on. I can actually just lay out that group by here, one, two for the first and second column. But yeah, that's just in order not to forget it. What we actually want to focus in, what focus on are those counts and amounts here, the four columns we need to calculate. So trends count, approved count, trends total amount, and approved total amount. So yeah, I'll put these in as sort of placeholders, selecting that from the transactions table. We don't need any where filter or anything here. So yeah, this should be the main structure for our solution. So that actually works out well. We just have to fill out these calculations here and we should be done. So. The number of transactions should be quite easy. We have an ID for transactions. So that should be a count. Yeah, it should be a count, just counting IDs or just count star as well because, because one row should be one transaction. As I said, ID is the primary key here. So there shouldn't be any duplicates in the table. So this is why we can just count ID we want it to be extra sure or we wouldn't know whether that would be a primary key, we could say count distinct ID in order not to count duplicate entries of a transaction. Because maybe it, it was declined and then it changed to approved and both records are on the table. For this one, it shouldn't be the case. I'll leave this as count ID because we know it's a primary key, but yeah, something to look out for. In terms of the approved transaction count, we also want to count the ID, but we want to do this based on the state of the transaction. So the state should be approved, should only be approved transactions, not declined. 
if we want to sum up or count something or just do any sort of calculation with a column, but based on the value of another column, then we're probably using a case when statement. In this case, we want to count the amount of IDs, but we want to do that based on the value of the state column. Only if state, if the state value is approved, then we want to count the ID. So we could do count case when state equals approved, then ID else null end. And yeah, what I spell out is just similar to an if statement. If the state column equals approved, then we want to take the ID value and count that up. If it is not approved, that means it's declined, but yeah, we just care about it being approved or not. And then we take null and null values will not count into the count. And this way we get the count of approved transactions. Another way to do this would be to use the sum function here. So we could say sum case when state equals approved then one else zero. And yeah, this way we just sum up the values we get here, but we get a one value whenever the transaction is approved and a zero if it was not approved. And that way summing that up, it will give us the amount of approved transactions. Yeah, this also works because we know there's one row per transaction. If that wouldn't be the case, then it would be better to do the count based on ID and then use count distinct ID. Same reasoning as for the prior calculation for trans count, because yeah, this way, if we sum up the rows and there are duplicate entries for, for transactions, then we would count them multiple times and we get the wrong value. Yeah. Final thing I wanted to mention, since this is MySQL or MySQL, we could reduce this statement and say sum of state equals approved, because in MySQL, this would evaluate to one if it's true and zero if it's false, making it a lot shorter and cleaner. So yeah, I'll leave it at that, but you can play around using different versions. So for transaction total amount, this one should be easier. I'm just double checking. So yeah, the first two calculations were counts of transactions and now these are based on the amounts. So yeah, in order to get the sum of the amount for all transactions, we're just going to take some amount, very simple. You just need to understand then when they, that when they say the total amount, total, that just means take the sum. So if you see total, you probably take a sum. Sometimes if you want to have the total amount of entries in the table, it would be a count probably or also a sum using this sort of true false structure. But yeah, since we're summing up an amount which requires addition, we will just use the sum function here. And yeah, should be done for this one. Then for this final column, we sort of need to combine this sum amount with that logic we had for approved transactions only. So yeah, let's think about how to combine that. We can either use what we have here, sum state approved. So here we could, yeah, be clever, combine this by saying, let's take this evaluation that gives us true for if the transaction is approved and zero if it's not approved and multiply that by the amount. Yeah, so what we do here is a trick I see often, but it's, it's sometimes it's hard to read and understand. So by multiplying the column, we actually want to sum up by this true false evaluation that evaluates to one or zero. We actually cancel out values if 
uh, this condition evaluated to, to false because we multiply by zero. If we multiply by zero, that entire amount becomes zero and it will not be counted in the sum because yeah, if you add zero, the sum won't change. If you multiply it by one, you, also, you won't change the value of amount, which is what, we, what you're summing up, and you will add that amount to the sum. If you do that for any transaction based on whether they're approved or not approved, then you will only sum up approved transactions because those will be multiplied by one because this state equals approved. Comparison will evaluate to one for them. So yeah, basically you're making all not approved transactions amount zero and you're leaving the amount of approved transactions summing that up and that way you get the approved total amount. So very clean solution. This one also uses the MySQL sort of shorter syntax for the comparison. Could also use case when state approved then one zero times amount, but maybe the I'd say best solution is when state equals approved, then take the amount. So don't do that multiplication, just replace it with the actual amount directly and else zero and yeah, that should work too. Yeah, because for approved transactions, you will get the amount, otherwise you get zero. We're basically doing the same thing, just in a different format and syntax, which should use in all SQL dialects. I'm pretty sure, so you could choose whatever here, except pandas, which is Python and it should still work. So let's do a little mix, ma uh, mix of syntax here, which should both work in MySQL, just to illustrate my sort of point. So let's run that here. I hope we don't have any spelling comma errors here. Seems like I do. So yeah, here I still need to say as to sort of name that calculation what we want to name it. And then now I should have it for every calculation and we should be good there as trans account as approved total amount. Oh yeah, it's another comma here, but that should be it then. Oh yeah, <laughs> one big thing we needed to take care of is actually the month column. And that should be the final thing here. So for month, we want to have the year and the month of the date of the transaction date and group by that. So we want to make that calculation for every country, US and Germany here, and for every month that we have data for. So in order to do that, you could either take the transaction date and take the first few character of that value. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by using this left function, left seven, take the leftmost seven characters and call that month. For month, let's put that into quotes just because it might be picked up as SQL syntax and the editor might be confused when we run this or the interpreter. Yeah, but you won't always be able to do that necessarily because you might have a different date format where you have date, month, year or month, date, year. So you can really rely on that. In order to do that, I like to use a date format function which I sort of pulled up here. This is just something you have to have a function for when you go into an interview. I'd say in an interview, people would probably not expect you to know the entire syntax and this sort of whole table here. But for something that's quite common, like the year month, you should probably have your preferred way of doing that. And as I said, using date format, you should be able to output 
any format based on any input format. So yeah, this one takes an actual date in this year month date format. And then you can specify what format you want the output to have. And this is sort of the lookup table. I'm pretty much only using this for the year month or just to get the year or just month, maybe the weekday. But in order to get year month here, I would have to specify percentage uppercase Y to get the year as a four digit value. And then I would have a dash because that's what we want the output to have. And then percentage lowercase m to get the month as a numeric value. If I took the uppercase m, it would be spelled out as a string January to December. Yeah, this is sort of a discourse from what's happening here, but you, you must have some solution for that. And date format is what I found to work for any SQL dialect and most people don't understand. So I'll use it here, date format. Let's also use the transaction date here and specify that syntax I just talked about. So percentage uppercase Y dash percentage lowercase m will give us the year with four digits, the dash, and then the month as a digit as well. Yeah. Let's run that. And that should hopefully be the final solution. We sort of needed to work through some specifics to get it all wrapped up. But this one was marked as medium for a reason. It's going to be accepted. And yeah, I sort of talked about a few different ways you can solve it. Maybe that's a good one to play around with in lead code yourself. So I'll link the question. And once you're done, feel free to hit up that lead code SQL 50 playlist I have to go through all of lead code SQL 50 and then hopefully get that batch to have solved all of SQL 50. Yeah, so that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you in another video. Bye bye.